Now, here's what we're gonna do. Here's all I wanna do today. I wanna go through the color blocking and the shading. Does that make sense? I think it'll be fine. I'm gonna lock that. I'm gonna lock all this other stuff. But I'm gonna put a new layer and I'm gonna call this base color. Now, here's the deal when I have line, okay? Like this line is very thin. I think it's too thin right here. Let's see if I can. That. Now, here's another thing you gotta think about when you're building these. What lines are gonna connect to what, okay? So I'm gonna see if I can just go a little fatter with this line. So I'm gonna lock this off. I'm on my base color layer. <clears throat> And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go around the perimeter of this. Now here I gotta be careful because it's such a thin line. So I gotta line that up pretty good. But where the lines get thicker, I don't have to be very careful at all because as long as it stays behind that line, it doesn't matter. Does that make sense? Yes. You're not, you're not going to see that edge. So it just doesn't matter. And there's not going to be a line on it. So that little thing right there will go away. And I would just go around the entire perimeter only of this thing. Whatever this thing. Oops. Corner point tool. I can see what I'm at. Here, I got to be a little more careful because it's a really thin line. I can adjust these two when I make screw ups here. Because what you got to get out of thinking with Illustrator, which a lot of people do think, is that it's all about creating shapes and then filling the shapes. It's not. You can create independent line work and then do your rendering. So you guys see what I'm doing here, right? I would just go around the entire perimeter, correct? Yes. Yes. Now, yes. for speed's sake, I already have one, okay? So what I have here, you can see it's jaggedy and stuff, right? But it's under that line, okay? So what I really ended up with at the end of that was, You know, just a oops. just that. Okay. I just end up with the line under the line. Okay. So then I can come here and go to my now. If you want to sample something, that's fine. If you want to make up your own color, that's fine. I'm going to go to this eyedropper. I'm going to sample the overall color. And now I've just got this silhouette of the overall color. So there's the ink. Make sense? Yes. Okay, now, uh, have any, uh, most of you, have most of you been in Photoshop? A bit. Okay. A little bit. Yep. No. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so in Photoshop and in Illustrator, you have a thing called layer blends. In Photoshop, they live in layers, and here they have their own, their own um, palette, which is right here, which is transparency. Okay, and it's right here. This is your, these are your layer blends. What layer blends are, is they will blend whatever's on the layer above or the shape above with the shape below in different ways, okay? When, you, when I go to a gray value, so I'm gonna grab a gray value, and down here, there's your gray scale. I'm gonna go to like maybe there, okay? And if I put this on, let's just do this. So my lights from up here, I'm gonna go, let's just start here. Think about how your light goes. It's gonna come over that. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me do one more thing. What you gotta do now is come in here and color block. So I'm using the colors off of this thing so it's quicker.
Let me go right here. And this actually, I like to have on its own layer. I like to break up the color layers. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna call this color block. Now, you can see I was sloppy right here. I know you're not. Yeah, it's real sloppy. So I'm gonna come in here. I wanna go just adjust this. It's not so sloppy. Now, if I'd have gone in closer on here, I wouldn't have been this sloppy. That's my fault. That's a little. And I would go through here and I would color black out all my stuff. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 And here, this thin line like that's a little chicken. and so on and so forth, okay? Now, I'm gonna go up here and I wanna put shadows. I like everything separated. And now I'm gonna go back and do what I started. I can't see the end of that handle. There's a little over there, and I fix that. Just get up close, and you won't have that problem. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my mid value. Right here. And then I'm going to go to my transparency and the overlay is multiply. What happens with multiply is it basically just makes the gray transparent. And it gives me a shadow value and it picks up the underlying color. Does that make sense? No, basically, multiply just makes your gray value transparent. And it, it blends it with the, the color underneath. Got it. Okay. Okay. So the value of that is that when I'm doing something like this, I should have done it all as one thing. So let's do this. This is also the beauty of it. I can do it all as one thing across this whole thing. I'm just going to do it simply. Turn this to multiply. 
And you can see it picks up this and then this value. So I don't have to go in and find all the shadow values. Make sense? Yes. Okay, now, so you will go through color block. Now these, her highlights to me are pretty sloppy. I'm not really that happy with those. So let's go, let's do this. Let's block this out. Now, here's the last part of this equation. So we would go through here. We would do all our blocking first. Then we would do all our shadow values. Now I'm gonna create a new layer here above everything called highlights. I'm gonna lock those off because I don't need them bothering me right now. And okay, so here's how your gradient tool works. I'm gonna make this. But now I'm gonna go over here to my swatches. And of course it's not there. Right here, and right there's my gradient swatch, okay? So it just gives me a base gradient, okay? So now I'm gonna grab my gradient tool right over here, and I don't need it going this way, so I'm gonna do it this way, okay? So now I've got this, I've got white here. So if I double click this, I will get this. This is where I can manipulate it through my CMYK. This is where I can manipulate it. It's my, my swatches aren't there, which is really annoying. <clears throat> Your swatches should be there. The reason the swatches aren't there is that I added the swatches after um, I opened the program. It's just a stupid illustrator thing. But I can go, so let's just do it here. You know, I can make that yellow or whatever I want, okay? When I double click it. Now, the other thing you have right here is an opacity, okay? So let's go, I'm gonna go, and then if I go, Option, just like a bunch of stuff in most programs, if I go option drag, it will give me another point. Okay, these are just how they blend together, these two little triangles or diamonds or whatever. This one I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna make it white. So everything's white now, correct? And I'm gonna pull this inside the line. I'm gonna pull this inside the line. I'm gonna go double click, take this to zero. I'm gonna double click, take this to zero. And now I get this nice clean blend. You guys see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So now let's apply it. So I'm gonna go here and we'll go through a bunch of different um, tools for doing blends and things. There's a lot of, or there's a few of them. Now I'm gonna create another shape. I'm going to do it right on this edge. Now I'm going to go back to here. Only I'm going to take this and take it this way. And now you can see I'm starting to get a, a highlight. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. So here's the thing you got to think about, though. This actually needs to be, no, oh, that's fine. There's a little funkiness right there. That I'm not gonna so when I look at this and I go, so think about this. What is shiny? What isn't shiny? What is matte and what isn't matte? Okay. So if this was a t-shirt, it's not going to be that shiny. That feels like metal or something, right? So on something like this, I, I just make a decision where I go, Maybe this middle one, <clears throat> I take down the opacity to, I don't know, 40. That feels a little better. More like that. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And then I would go around here because my light's coming from here, wherever your light's coming from. And I would have a shadow value on here. I would already have. And by the way, if I grab, if I go to my eyedropper tool and I grab this thing or this color, it will also pick up the um, the multiply and everything. So I can just start sampling that. I don't have to go find it. Okay, so I could have that, and then I can have this, and here's the trick with it too. By the way, so like this is going to end. I don't want to have a hard edge on the end. Okay. 
So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to go here. Oops, it picked up the line. There it is. And I start to get a nice highlight. Here's the trick with it, though. <clears throat> when you're doing this, you want to make sure that the, the fade ends before the end of the shape. Does that make sense? Because otherwise you're going to get this. And you're going to get that hard edge. Make sense? Yes. So you want to make sure that your line or your uh, gradient, which is that tool right there, that this point is pulled in before it ends. This one is pulled in before it ends. And then if you look here, these little diamonds, that sort of adjusts. Like, look, I can make it really metallic looking if I do something like that. Okay, now here's the other thing with uh, gradients. <clears throat> you can go here to, to uh, window. You got swatch libraries. Where are my gradients? Right here, gradients. And they have all these preset gradients. So here, the, here's a bunch of them. This is foliage. Why is this? Okay, so they have all these presets in here under swatch libraries, gradients. They have, and then they have metallics in here. Where are they? Metals right here, which is really handy because you can get in here, and I'll always adjust them usually, but it gives me a starting point for things like, you know, silver. Copper, which is nice. And then you can come in here and grab this and then you can manipulate it. Here's all your colors. You see that? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So I don't want that much light in it. So I'm gonna go 70. If you notice the, the higher you go with the light, the more sort of chromic it looks. Okay. Okay, so they have those and then when I get through all this, then I can come through here at some point and I can either just go it be as simple as a dot in certain spots. You know, I can put a little highlight on there if I want. Now, another thing you could do is you could go here to the star tool, get like, I don't know, let's try that. Make it very small. You know, you could do it that way. It's too big. But... And that's not going the right way. It feels weird. So, and put them with it. Like, this is a um, specular highlight looking enough yet to get a highlight like that. I'm just putting it on there as an example. This would make more sense if this went back to being this. In, spec in specularity makes more sense when it's got, you know, it's showing some sort of specularity. Okay, so what I want to get tomorrow is just a completed thing like that. Then what I do is I'll take this, my whole base shape. Now here's another thing we need to know. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this gray. I'm going to make this gray. Now notice it's in front of my character. I don't want it in front of my character. I want it behind. 
So you go up here to object, arrange, send to back, or you can bring the front. Right now it's in the front. So I want to send it to the back and it put it behind it. You guys see that? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to go here, grab this point up here, pull it down. And I get a shadow value and that grounds it. Does that all make sense? Cool. Yes. Yes. 